Okay, uh, in this uh, short video I'm going to um, develop the in, uh, uh, idea of inductive impedance. Uh, it is from Professor Potty's uh, lecture number three, which, is, which are posted on CCLE. Um, so uh, what we are doing here first is that we are starting uh, with um, a circuit that looks like this right here. And um, it, uh, it is, consists of a voltage source V of T and an inductor uh, L, which we're going to call L. And that, uh, those are the um, uh, two components of it. Uh, and we, those are the two things uh, that we know. Uh, so we are going to be uh, working with that. Uh, but we also, um, <clears throat> this, is what we, this is what we want. We want this value right here. We want a Z sub L, which is something like Ohm's law, which, which is uh, V over I. So uh, this is what we're after, an impedance that uh, has the same kind of properties as uh, resistance, uh, except that uh, it's for AC. And like I said, v, uh, v and L are known, and we want to let uh, we want to let V of T equal E to the J omega T. Well, what does that mean, uh, E to the J omega T? Well, if you remember, uh, <clears throat> if you remember Euler's identity, then you know that E to the J omega T can be represented by cosine omega T plus J sine omega T. And now that allows us to plot this as a complex number uh, as a complex uh, as, as a complex number on the complex plane and so that's what we are showing uh, right here uh, on the complex plane where the real part and uh, the imaginary part is um, the imaginary part is uh, plotted against the real part and you can see obviously that cosine omega t falls along the real axis and j sine omega t falls along the uh, imaginary axis. So that makes a lot of sense. And what we have then uh, is right here the uh, vector e to the j omega t, which is the resultant of those two um, uh, components. So uh, here we are. And uh, that is, and, and I should also mention that the, and t is time, right? And so that is continually increasing. And so what does that mean? For this vector, e to the j omega t, what it means is that that vector is actually rotating. It is actually rotating around the origin. So, uh, uh, but we're picking it at a we're we're picking it at a single point in time, just to show the relationship between the components and the resultant. But it's actually a rotating vector. Okay. So uh, now, just given, given that, how do, we, how do we proceed here to try to find the relationship between ZL, V of T, and I of T, uh, which, is, which is what we want. So we can do start by writing a KVL. Um, we can start by writing a KVL equation. So let's, let's write KVL, KVL. And we can say, well, um, uh, because obviously if they are connected like this, we have plus and minus. And so I'm going to say that this is um, V of T minus uh, V sub L of T uh, equals zero. And that means that we can say V of T equals V sub L of T. All right. So we have... Um, we have here then V of uh, T equals VL of T, but what is VL of T? Well, it's L di dt. So here's L di dt. Um, so now we have this issue. What, what are we going to try? The i dt, that's the unknown term. We know VL of T, uh, uh, we know V of T and we know L. So uh, we can try though. Um, we can try this expression, I of t equals AE to the ST, which means that 
di dt equals a s e to the s t. And so at t equals zero, right here, then i of zero is equal to i sub zero. If you remember, <coughs> uh, we declared that up here at the beginning. So uh, as the initial condition, and so uh, we can now say that um, a is equal to i zero right here. Uh, and so um, now then uh, we can go back to the v of t equals vl of t again, but now it's l d i d t, uh, and d i d t is a s e to the s t, and but we know that I, a is i zero. So there we are. This is the expression that we have. So, but we also know that v of t can be expressed as e to the j omega t. So we plug that in, and um, then, uh, then we bring over the right-hand side, uh, basically unchanged with the rearrangement of terms a little bit. But the thing to notice here is that we have uh, uh, the left side increasing as e to the j omega t, and the right side then must also increase as e to the j omega t, uh, and that means that s has to equal j omega. So that's this part right here, uh, and uh, so now we can plug in j omega for s, which is what uh, we've done right here. Um, so now then we can see that we can um, divide both sides by e to the j omega t. And when we do that, we get this, which leads to another expression for i sub zero, which we didn't know we want and we weren't happy with, but now we're much happier because we have that in terms of, again, uh, L, which is a property of the circuit, and omega, which is a property of the forcing function, the voltage source. So uh, happy now with an expression for I zero. So um, at, at this point, then, we can say that um, I of t, which is this expression, we're going all the way back up to this one now. We're going all the way back up here, because remember, this is what we want. We want I of t right here. So we have, now we want an expression for I of t. We've guessed an expression for I of t, and now we have an expression that we can use, which is A, instead of A, it's going to be 1 over j omega L, and E to the st, where s is j omega. So that is this expression right here. This was, this part, this part here was A, and this part here was s. So uh, we can, now, this, uh, and, and now then we go all the way back up to the beginning and remembering that we want the expression for ZL. We want the expression for an expression, an Ohm's law type of expression, and it would be some V over I, so that's what we're after. And so this is it. ZL is equal to V over I. We know that V is E to the J omega T, and I of T is this expression right here. So, obviously, we can cancel out the e to the j omega t's, and we're left with zl equals j omega l, which is now our answer. This is the inductive impedance inductive impedance. J omega L, inductive impedance. And I'll just write it again in here, Z sub L. Okay, so that's it.